chemistry and physics Sometimes we can actually see water contamination happening. Ah, like a surface pipe discharging polluted water into a lake. Not good. When it comes from a place like that, water quality scientists call it point source pollution. Point source pollution. Any guesses what they call it when they can't pinpoint a specific source? Non-point source pollution. Non-point source pollution. Now things really get complicated when non-point sources pollute groundwater below the surface that you can't even see. And when you add something called karst topography, karst topography, it takes some serious detective work to figure out causes and cures. With all these cracks running down here, what does that mean for groundwater? Critical here? questions. How can rain and air make acid? Why does rain dissolve water? Okay, so when it rains, you've got a water drop going through the atmosphere. It's going to mix with the carbon dioxide and make a very weak acid called carbonic acid. When that weak acid hits the ground surface and it starts soaking in, it can actually start dissolving the rock. You're going to take these cracks and you're going to make them a whole lot bigger. With all these cracks running down here, what does that mean for groundwater in an area like this? Well, it means a couple of things. One, it means that the water can go from the ground surface into the aquifer really fast. And two, if there's any pollution sitting up there at the ground surface, it can go into the aquifer really fast too. So it starts all the way up there, it comes down here through these cracks into the groundwater. It's a direct pathway for water and possible pollution. If pollution can get into groundwater from almost anywhere here, let's see, there's a farm. There's an orchard, a few houses, a business. Oh, man. Where do we begin looking? and How can science help get us answers? This limestone at the surface really looks cool. Yeah, but if you look at the amount of topsoil, which is about 24 inches, that's the only protection you have towards the aquifer that you're getting your groundwater and drinking out of. Wait, I thought dirt made water dirty. How is it protecting it? You wouldn't think dirt cleans water, but this is how it works. The more dirt you have before it hits this rock formation, it takes out and cleanses the water and the impurities before it hits your groundwater. Ah, the soil is a water filtration system. I get it. What else? So the more protection, the more clay and topsoil that you have on top of your aquifer is a protection layer because that clay takes up the nutrients, the bacteria, and soaks it up so that the plants can use it before it hits your groundwater. What's the solution to pollution? Conservation, nutrient management plans with farmers who are doing best management practices or BMPs. How do you know if it's coming from that farm or that church over there? When we get a well that's contaminated in this kind of aquifer, we do what's called a microbial source tracking test. And that will tell us if it's either human or bovine. Wait, you guys can figure out what kind of bacteria it is? How do you do that? You're going to have to talk to someone else on that. Huh? Oh, hi. I don't know much about pathogens, but are you saying it's alive and we drink it? Yeah, they're pretty much alive. Sometimes they need to reach a host before they become alive. A pathogen is a microorganism that causes illness in a person. And there are three basic types, protozoa, bacteria, and then the last group are the viruses. Viruses are very tiny. They're the ones that can reach groundwater the easiest. And that's why we disinfect our drinking water supplies for the most part, to kill these pathogens. When it rains and the water is moving downward, those pathogens move with the groundwater. And once they reach there, especially where we live here in Wisconsin, it's just the perfect environment for these pathogens to live. Yeah, but how can you tell whether it's human or bovine? One of the ways of identifying the source is molecular or genetic fingerprinting. It's like using the fingerprint at a crime scene. And we pull out the DNA, it's specific to that pathogen. So when we detect it, we know that pathogen was there. And then if we find a suspected source where we have that same sequence, voila, we got it, we got the source. Oh, I get it. It doesn't happen all the time and everywhere. But when we go to other parts of the state, like in northeastern Wisconsin, where the groundwater comes from a fractured rock system, 
that's where we see 70% of the samples had some level of fecal contamination in them. That's very high. Yeah, uh, that doesn't sound too good. Not everybody likes to talk about manure, but it can be a problem. If handled improperly, let's say over application manure, that manure can run off the soil and down into the crevice bedrock, causing groundwater pollution. So you got manure, phosphate, and nitrogen here. I see a crack right there. What does that do when people across the street drink the water? Well, that's when, when you get well contamination. Nitrogen is not healthy for infant development. Phosphorus impacts surface waters. If the field is located in a karst topography and we can identify a bedrock feature such as a sinkhole and we see that a manure application was applied and it ran off down that sinkhole, we can generally feel pretty certain that that's the cause of that pollution. Incorporating the manure, tilling the manure into the ground so that the manure has contact with the soil particles so that it stays put and doesn't leave the field. Bottom line is that a lot of different factors here in karst country play a role in affecting the groundwater resource. And a lot of the solutions involve science. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock. The clock tonight, we're gonna rock around the clock to broad daylight. Yeah!